There's something I've been wanting to share with you. If now's a good time. <sighs> no. The opposite. I feel like I can share this with you. I've never felt that way before. It's difficult to put into words. I think it might be easier to just show you. Use the tadpole. The connection. Come into my mind. I'm sure. I trust you. How I came to be who I am. How I found my way to Lady Shah's embrace. I don't remember how it started, only how it ended. I was fleeing. my name. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember anything before those woods. All I know is she saved my life and gave me a new home with Lady Sharp. <laughs> it hurts. That's all I remember. Something sparks in your memory about Salunite rites of passage. You heard once about how they would send their children out into the wilds to navigate their way home. <laughs> You're reading too much into things. A childhood bauble, that's all. Just because Salunites claim something doesn't mean they own it. Lady Shah. But yes, her and those who saved me and taught me her ways. The Mother Superior. She made me who I am. At least as best as I can remember. She taught me, trained me, punished me when I failed her, which was often. Abuse. Nonsense. The Mother Superior made me strong for the Dark Lady.
I'll give it a shot. I'll take that. ahead.
take two. What am I to do? Well, hello. Let's try this. Let's move. No hesitation. No. 
one with the weave. Still breathing, despite everything. Wonder if the gods are watching me. I'm ready. Whatever it takes.
corpse from it. Watch how you go. There's a trap. I bind. Can't give up now. They call for Susa bark. There's only one place I'm finding a Susa tree. The Underdark. Traps, please. What now? A crooked touch. Watch your back. Let's 
get going. On my way. What's next, I wonder? All's well that ends, and not as bad as it could have. Still alive, so that's progress. At the ready. Seems simple enough. Something good here, I hope. Open surely. Has to do something. Shadowheart's attention is consumed by a strange box that she turns over in her hands. The box is inscribed with glyphs similar to those used by the Githyanki. In an instant, Shadowheart hides the box from view. It's nothing, trust me. Beautiful evening, isn't it? You can really appreciate the darkness out here in the wilds. Not like in the city, where they keep lamps burning all hours. It's not natural. To some, perhaps. But I'll enjoy the dark while I can. Alone, if you don't mind. Glad to have an ally. There you are. I was just thinking about you and that delicious moment we shared the other night. The very same. I've had this condition for two centuries, but truth be told, <clears throat> you were my first. In all these years, I've only ever fed on Beasts. Drinking the blood of thinking creatures is a different thing entirely. You were delectable. And now I can't help but wonder how the others taste. Alas. It doesn't hurt to ponder the question, though. Take Gale, for example. He strikes me as someone whose blood is rich, refined, like well-aged brandy. But the gift, 
What in the hells would she taste like? Hmm. Oh. Well, that sounds very appealing. I'm almost convinced. <sighs> Absolutely. A mere thought experiment. So, in the spirit of theoretical questions, if you had to take a bite from one of them, who would it be? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't be disgusting. I just mean a sip of their blood. No mastication required. Oh. <laughs> I'm flattered. Who knew you had such taste? Unfortunately, all this talk is getting me... Hungry. I better find something I can actually sink my teeth into. Uh, there's nothing that tasty lurking out in the woods, but I'll make do. Uh, sweet dreams. Hello, my dear. Darling. I thought you'd never ask. I'll see you tonight. May the darkness protect you. If you're sure. Fine. I'll be here whenever you rediscover your taste in company. Speak. It is done. What's on your mind? I assure you it's not. Don't get me wrong. You did well. The somatic component, the verbal component, even the focus on the inner self that invites Mistra in. But I was still your conduit. To perform such a feat alone requires much and arduous study. Of course, as a sorcerer, these talents come to you quite naturally. I do hope you cherish that gift. You find well, but you're so...
efficient. Why not have a little fun? Fun? I fight to win, not to make spectacles. <sighs> what a waste. Beast fit for an ogre. You notice a peculiar dagger protruding from the tough, leathery meat. You notice the blade is at an angle to the meat's grain. If you align the dagger with the grain, it should slip out easily. Thanks to your keen eye, the dagger glides smoothly out of the mystery meat. Slow down. As you approach, a guttural scream and a succession of quick bangs rattle the door. Then, a low moan. Someone, or something, is having a bit of fun. Wait, don't interrupt them. Let me do it. They sound disgusting. <laughs>
I've seen worse. Gnomes can be... Ugh. willing to speak, but not to its killer. How delicious. Oh, I have the magic touch. No time to rest. Never a dull moment. does. Oh, don't mind if I do. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. has any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. 
the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later even my lover. A mortal, enchanted by the allures of the divine? Is that not a tale as old as time? I merely happen to be one of its protagonists. We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. Though not, I think, my methods. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. What is it? What do you see? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, 
remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry. It'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. You thrice damned rotten bastard! You've been the greatest threat to our lives all this time! I swear to you I wasn't! But I've no choice but to admit I am now. Perhaps it would be best if I leave and put as much distance between us as I can before the orb erupts. I know. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word. And we'll part ways. You'd have us debate that Netherese Jack in the Box should be a blip on the horizon by now. I agree. Let us be rid of this menace. I would consume some midnight tears and venture as deep into the Underdark as I possibly could. Till they cloud my eyes forever. With a bit of luck, I'd manage to make it to a mind flare colony so that when the orb erupts, one loud last song of vengeance would reverberate through the dark. Wouldn't be a heroic end, but coarsely poetic enough in its justice. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now. Even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Keep your distance, darling. <sighs> Is that blood? No, never mind. Very well. Something over there. Eager for battle. Let's get going. If not over, then through. I bet that'll fit in my pack.
Let's have a look. Swift as my feet can carry me. Something tore right through these people. They didn't stand a chance. I want to have a word. The beast reeks of brimstone and offal. <clears throat> Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You watch with cold realization. This isn't the end of one life, but the start of another. Gnolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids can spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. Her belly spills like a rotten fruit, birthing a frenzy of claws and fangs. Be alone.
Let's just go. There's only so much my stomach can take. Watch your back. Oh. No time to rest. Anything of use?
the way forward. What's inside? Well met. I am a magical projection of Gale of Waterdeep, and if you see this manifestation, that means I have prematurely perished. However, for reasons that cannot be disclosed, it is of vital importance that my death be remedied at your earliest convenience. You may rest assured that I do not speak out of self-preservation alone. Many lives depend on my return to the living within the span of two days. I trust I've made myself clear. I have upon my deceased person a magical item that can accomplish my return. But such is the value and rarity that it is protected by a multi-layered security protocol. I will now explain the protocol. Step one is to retrieve from my person a pouch I wear over my heart. Next, you must unthread the purple seam that seals it in a counterclockwise fashion. Do not touch any other colored strand. Inside the pouch, you will find a folded letter and a tiny flute. Unfold the letter and note the markings in the top and bottom corners. These are the notes you will need to play. Starting from the bottom right, play the notes in correct order, clockwise this time. Upon completion of the tune, a magma method will appear, which will pose the following question. Iskcha Chisnaga. This is ignorant for what is my name? The answer is Kasi Trak Ash. Pronounce the name correctly and the method will breathe on the letter. Stay clear because the little scamp can melt metal. Words will now appear on the letter's surface, effectively turning the letter into a scroll of true resurrection. Use it to bring me back to life. I think ingenious is the word you're looking for. Now, repeat my instructions back to me, please. In that case, this will be an easy exercise. Step one. And next. Chuck, how quick your mind turns to mush. You unthread the purple seam. The purple seam indeed. You then have access to the letter and the flute. Continue. Wrong, I'm afraid. Bottom right. Quite right. You start at the bottom right corner and remember to play them clockwise. After that? Kashi Trachash. The blighter is called Kashi Trachash. Listen to your friend. It's Kasi Trach Ash. And pay attention to the Trach part. Yeah, back of the throat. And so we have gone through the necessary steps again. Let's hope practice makes perfect in the end. Best of luck with the protocol. May my cold, dead hands soon be refilled with the warmth of life so they can shake yours in gratitude. Something good here, I hope. Into <laughs> the easy path. The 
pouch is sealed with differently colored strands of thread. As the purple thread becomes undone, the pouch opens to reveal a letter and flute inside. This is the flute Gail kept on his person. A faint magical aura envelops its wooden surface. Bravo! I didn't think you had it in you. The flute awaits with bated breath. More. My word, you did it! <laughs> oh, it's good to be alive. My hands are still cold, so that handshake will have to wait, but in the meantime... Thank you. But a necessary one. Scrolls of true resurrection don't grow on trees, you know. Now, I believe adventure awaits. Or misadventure, perhaps. <laughs> hmm. Shall we? Nothing would give me greater pleasure. <laughs> What's the subject of the day? The instructions were easy enough, weren't they? If slightly elaborate, I find that a healthy amount of theatrics, a voice from the beyond, a magic flute, a friendly, if highly combustible, magma method tends to make for a more compelling case. If nothing else, I'm sure I piqued your curiosity. Go ahead, I'm listening. If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. 
I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun. Or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death. Alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be in the camp then, idling away the hours. <laughs>